we're focusing in on the M of our slope intercept. We're focusing in on our slope. And we're just trying to compare uh, if they give us two separate lines with two separate coordinates or, or two separate slope intercept forms and evaluate, okay, is it parallel or perpendicular? So let's say they give us a slope of two, or we like to say two over one, up two over one. If I have a parallel slope, I want that to be equal. I want the slopes to be equal because I want the same up and over. So let's say I'm looking at two separate lines, 2x plus 4 and a 2x minus 1. If I'm looking at these two lines and I see that my slope here is parallel, okay, or I see that my slopes are the same, I can say, okay, these slopes are parallel. Let's take a look at that. If I'm to graph that, plus 4, we'll graph this in green, plus 4, up 2 over 1, right, up 2 over 1, and I'm to graph this line, let's say in red here, and I'll start at my negative y for, for negative 1 for my y-intercept, and I'm going to go up 2 over 1, you can see that because my slope and the rate of change is the same, because <coughs> Uh, rate of change is the same. This, these lines will increase, or let's say decrease if it were a negative slope, at the same rate. So that's going to cause them to be par uh, uh, parallel. But be careful, be careful because there are some cases where they give you, they give you a line let's say y is equal to 4 over 2x plus 4. And if you're to reduce this, it would end up being 2x plus 4. These two lines, if I have a y is equal to 2x plus 4, these two lines are not parallel. If I have a 2x plus 4 for one line, let's say my line 1, and for my line 2, I have the same slope and y-intercept, these are not parallel. It's actually, what we'll say is, it's actually just the same line. It can't be parallel because the one line will be written over the other. They're actually intersecting all the way through. So anytime you have the same slope and y-intercept, you would say if the y-intercept is equal, slope is equal, you would say that that's the same line. You would say that. Now let's look at something different here. Let's look at let's look at a um, a perpendicular case. Here's your symbol for perpendicular. Okay. Let's look at it. Let's say my slope is one over three. Okay. Let's say my slope is one over three. A perpendicular slope will be the negative negative reciprocal. Meaning, reciprocal, flipping the fraction and changing the sign from positive to negative. Let's look at some examples of that. Let's look at some examples of that. So let's say you have... Red is sticky. Let's say you have negative 3. Perpendicular slope to that, 1 over 3, positive. Let's say you have a 4. Perpendicular slope to that, 1 over 4. Let's say you have a negative 1 third. Perpendicular slope to that, positive 3 over 1. Actually, the perpendicular slope to 4 would have been negative 1 over 4. If, if you have a neither case where it's not parallel or perpendicular, it would look Basically, okay, I have the, the negative 3, I flipped it, I flipped it, but I didn't change the sign, didn't change sign. So that's not, that's not going to be perpendicular, because the sign didn't change. Or maybe I have the case where I have negative 3, and I make it a positive 3, but I didn't, I didn't reciprocate, or I didn't flip, so that, that wouldn't be... That wouldn't be perpendicular either. 
Now let's look at what a graph would look like if we were working with perpendicular slopes. What would a graph look like? So let's say I had a, let's keep it simple. I won't even put a y-intercept. I won't even put a y-intercept. I'll say 2x is my slope from one line, and I'll say negative 1 half x is my slope for the other. So, and I'll just say basically my, if I didn't list a y-intercept, that my origin, my origin is basically zero. So, uh, or my y-intercept is the origin. So if I start here and I go up two over one, and on the other line, put this in green, and on the other line, I go down one, over 2 and graph, okay, you'll see that these two lines, these two lines intersect and are per perpendicular because their intersection forms a 90 degree or right angle. And you can see that. You can see that. Your question? So alter. Because you said you showed the little symbol on the bottom, and it was like, so all the symbols are 90 degrees, so all perpendicular lines are 90 degrees? Yeah, so if you look at a graph, if you look at a graph, let's say I make a y equals x line, and then the other line is, is like this, uh, it's close, but it isn't, I mean, it's technically not a right angle. This is not perpendicular. Yeah, they're intersecting. Yeah, it looks like an X, but that right angle is an important piece there. Let's take a look at if they were to ask you to give an equation of a line parallel. So they're asking you now to give an equation. So let's say they give you one line and they tell you Okay, you have one linear equation, 5x plus 4. Slope of 5, y-intercept of 4. And then a lot of times what, what will, will be asked is that it's passing through another point. Let's say negative 3, negative 6. So they're asking for another equation. They're asking for the other line. They're giving you this line at 4 of 5 over 1, they're giving you this line, and they're asking for something parallel to this that's passing through this line. Now, I know it's parallel, so I know the slope will be the same. So let's say I'm trying to reconstruct my y equals mx plus b. One thing I know is that my slope, because it's parallel, will be the same. My slope will be 5. What I don't know is my y-intercept. The best equation when you don't know your slope intercept, but they're giving you points, x1, y1. Here I have an x1, y1, and a slope. I know I have my go-to equation, my point-slope form, where I have a point and a slope. All right, here we go. And I have y minus my y1 equals my slope, which is parallel and equal, x minus my x1. I like to rewrite this with the sign changing, negative, negative, positive, negative, negative, positive. And then I get y plus 6 is equal to 5x plus 15. I want to get x by itself. I'm going to subtract 6. y is equal to 5x plus 9. This would be a parallel line to my original equation to y equals 5x plus 4 passing through pt, passing through a negative 3 and negative 6. And if I graph that, I mean, look at it. The slope is, which was once 4, or the y-intercept, which was once 4, is now 1, 2, is now 6, 7, 8, 9. 
and the rate of change is the same. It's going up one, two, three, four, five, and it's going over one. So the rate of change, not a perfect graph here, but the rate of change here is the same. That's a terrible line. The rate of change here is the same. So you would see something parallel. A couple arrows, that's a sign for, geometric sign for parallel. Now let's say, let's say now this is parallel. This would be equation for line parallel. But let's say they ask you, can you give me an equation for a line perpendicular? And let's say they don't even, let's say the question doesn't even give you the slope intercept form, right? So we're going to be working with a couple different things here. Uh, and let's say they give you fractions. So we're going to throw about three curveballs into this. So let's say they give you standard form. We've seen this. And we'll work more with it. So here's, here's the equation that they give you. You don't have your y equals mx plus b, so the slope is missing. But they do give you, give you a point. This is your passes through, your pt. Here's your equation. First thing I want to do is find my slope from this. And in order to do that, I want to get y by itself. I want this form of it. So what I can do is basically just solve for y here. And say, OK, plus 7x, plus 7x negative 3y is equal to 7x plus 1. I've just moved the 7x over to the other side. I'm trying to get this y by itself. Last thing I can do is divide by negative 3. And what I'll have as a y equals mx plus b form, I'll have y is equal to set negative 7 over 3x minus 1 third. All right, here's my y-intercept. It said, it said, I divided by the negative 3, the positive 1 by the negative 3, so I just made this a negative number. And this negative 3 was on the bottom, so I'm basically just saying this is a negative fraction here. Now again, remember, when we talk about perpendicular, I'll, I'll use the abbreviation perp here, we're going to flip the fraction, so it goes from negative 7 over 3, I'll even do a little flip arrow here, to 3 over 7, and it goes from pop, it goes from negative, change the sign, sign change, it goes from negative to positive. So now my slope of a line perpendicular to this would be 3 over 7. Now I have that, you have to recognize that a lot of times, point slope form, they give you a point, here's your point. 8, 7, and they're giving you a slope, 3, 7. So you have that equation, y minus y1 is equal to my slope, m, x minus 8. I want to distribute y minus 7 is equal to 3 over 7x. What is this? Minus 24 over 7, I got that by doing 3 over 7 times 8 over 1. I multiply the tops and bottoms, 24 over 7. Uh, this is a positive, this is a negative, it becomes negative. And then I want to add 7 to both sides. So I'm going to have negative 24 over 7 plus 7 over 1, which becomes negative 24 over 7 plus, ooh, actually that's a, uh, we're adding 7 to both sides here, yeah, plus a 49 over 7. Make sure I have that buttoned up correctly. Yeah, it's a minus 7. Okay. And then I'm going to end up finding the difference of these two numbers. I can count up 6 to 30, 10 to 40, and then another 9. So that gives me about 25. So I can say this is 25 over 7. That will be my y-intercept. So the line perpendicular will be y equals my flipped sine change slope of 3 over 7x, and then my y-intercept, where I distributed here and added the 7 over 1, 
I have the unlike denominator, so I did 1 times 7, 7 times 7. This is a negative, this is a positive. I found the difference, and then I get positive 25 over 7 here. Um, eventually, we're going to learn how to change this to standard form, but I want to put that... I want to put that in another video, and actually what I'll do is I'll like, I'm going to try to put a link to this video, to the standard form video. But that should cover you for 36, 37. Yeah, question. Where did you get the 25 from? I think I did. Minus 24. Um, in order to change this fraction from 7 over 1, to a fraction over 7, remember I don't want to change the value, so if I do 1 times 7 for the bottom, I'm going to do 7 times 7 for the top. And this way I can combine here, I can, I can add and work with these fractions because their denominators are the same.